Hi, today I'm going to be talking about dwelling and not necessarily like in the most conventional ways, but first of all, we talk about, um, you know, I don't want to dwell on the negative, I don't want to dwell on the, po you know, on the pessimistic stuff, and so I have a couple sources of information, um, but a lot of this is going to be about what the self carries is what carries the self. So when we're abiding in some present reality, that is the abode. Abiding in becomes the abode to dwell in. So for example, when we're anxious, and this is from Alicia Goldstein, we have options to dwell in a more productive way. We can dwell not on anxiety because then we will be creating anxious attachments, anxious living. So first of all, he says, slow down. Then he says, come to your senses. He says, be mindful of a, come to your senses. Slow down means like practice pausing. Practice these things. These are not, these are ways to make a better dwelling for yourself. And I'll go into more details when I talk about some stuff I got out of my class called Living Deeply. Um, and in this way, it would be possible to really root this stuff into practice. But just to start, Come to the senses means practice feeling the senses, maybe going to your body. He gives another option is five, noticing for each of the five senses, senses five by five. So you go into your senses even, not just like practicing feeling different places of the body, like balance and stuff, but also practicing actually incorporating the perceptions and knowing your own triggers. What triggers mean? Maybe it's waiting where I can't reach someone. Or maybe it's a schedule with too much stuff, there's no way I could do all of it. Or maybe it's like making a mistake and then trying to like brush it off, but knowing that the best thing is to speak up and say what happened. Then he says, nurture patience. This is like, how does patience dwell in you? How can you be a dwelling place for patience? Lie down and look up. And this is something that sometimes I feel in my anxiety is overwhelming, but it breaks me through. I look up and there's so much space and I don't know which way is up anymore after a while and it really, really helps. He says, practice listening. Practice using your ears, even moving them in different directions. Practice which is closer, which is further noises. Practice hearing things in a new way. He says, release the critic. For a moment, there's creative thinking and there's critical thinking. For a moment, and there's other ways of looking at this, but for a moment, he says, let go of all the judgment. Okay, there's problems, right? But let go of the fact that you're judging. In that moment, just let it be. Okay, there's problems. I'm okay right now. And that's a practice, right? Do a reality check. How big is this? How bad is this? Is there no way I could change it? Can I readjust my schedule? Can I let go of what I thought I was supposed to do? Be mindful of a simple task. Do something like washing dishes, cleaning. He says even gardening. Be present with it. And you'll see that you can actually watch change be happening with you and it will it will be very helpful and I do this sometimes with like washing dishes I see it like I see the dishes are becoming clean and the water and everything and it makes me feel like I can apply that same <sighs> change is happening you know <laughs> like he says finally channel the anxious energy so use it for something maybe do exercise maybe you go for a walk Maybe you dance around to music. It's movement. It's a movement energy. It wants to do something. So channel it. Find a way. Um, and then I'll move like into this next part. And uh, I will. I'll say before I do that. I'll say like. Um, I want you to go into your tongue for a moment because I read that in the Messianic times there'll be a tree with fruit that will heal the tongue. And when we think about the tongue, actually it kind of con connects all the way, like, like going down the tongue. It could almost, like the muscles connect through the whole system of the digestion, all the way to the pelvic floor. So when we do like craniosacral work, it's cranium and sacrum, the tailbone. So try to connect your tongue for a moment as the practice today, like letting go of the anxious attachments, connect to the tongue. And recognize a lot of what we speak causes us anxiety. Speaking badly about others or complaining or 
speaking about worries as if they're true. Over talking. Having pretense with the words. Mocking. And feel the energy of the tongue healing as it goes down into the pelvic floor. And release the pelvic floor a little and take a deeper breath. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna talk about dwelling now. So dwelling, it's always here, but we get, we get to tap in when we're quiet. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so what am I holding? It comes in, then I hold it, right? Come the space. Then the beauty, the, which is the force, or it doesn't have to be the beauty, it could be the patience, it could be the contentment, the joy. That's the force. It comes in with, and becomes one with the carrier, which is me, right? So it could be anything, it could be playfulness and learning, um, could be surprise, could be calibration, whatever it is. You know, today I'm channeling empowerment and clarity. So the clarity comes in that I become clarity. The empowerment comes in and I become empowerment. And then there's like, I mentioned this pathway of like from, from this area, but really like, and this is Teferit. This is like Yadida. Yadida means beloved, Teferit means the heart. It's like the central channel. It's lasting force. So that's what we're talking about, beauty. It's lasting beauty. It is from the love of power to the power of love. And it's not having the mind dwell on anything. For here I am, now I am. Whether I'm in the park or I'm with my friends or I'm alone or I'm on the beach, or it's all in me already. I don't have to be anywhere. It's living in me. It's living in me from my tongue to my pelvis, right? This channel. I'm part of the all, and the all is part of me, so you might even think of the snake image a little, like the snake's tongue is sticking out on the other end, there's a tailbone, it's kind of like we have a snake tailbone and a snake tongue, and it's like wrapping around itself and inside out, because the all is in me, and then I'm in the all, and then the all is in me, and then I'm in the all, and then the all is in me, and I'm in the all, and it's, they say the scholar path is like looking at the all. And then the mystic path, we're like the absolute. And then the mystic path is like the face of it. Like I want to see into it. I want to see the, the all in me or in another. And a way to look at this is also like we prepare a table of the I am. Like I am and then it becomes for, like it's on its legs and it's made out of dense construction and it's like rooted and solid and it's a good table and it doesn't shake. and. But I am that table too, so whatever I'm putting on the table has to be also coming from the one that's the table. So in a way, it's kind of like I eat life and life eats me. So that's for sure with food and sure I'm bringing in the tongue, but it's also like in the speech. When we speak our way, some speech nourishes us, some speech depletes us, like food, like some processed food takes away your energy and some new, like fresh food gives you energy. And then while I'm abiding, I create an abode, right? But this is the idea of Hegel. Hegel is a palace that you live in. You make your palace. You, it's like the idea you, you made your bed, now lie in it, right? Um, there's eternal being, so we create what lasts. What kind of house do you want to live in? What kind of thoughts do you want to live in? Um, what is sustainable for you? What could you really rely on? We're all just really walking each other home in a sense because we're talking about the inner home, right? And um, that means we are able to be present wherever we are, whenever we are, whoever we're with, to be able to be grateful like a stream is like when you say every, you should be able to say every day I, I have a house right like so it's every single day that we get to be grateful like that without trying to be elsewhere and um, that's to be a vessel for presence so how do we have this joy and this it's like a salvation how do we have this joy and this presence is by as I just said being a presence being a vessel for presence being a vessel in presence now no matter who's here no matter what's here it is. And it's a stream. It's always changing. Can I be present now? Can I be present now? Can I be present now? <sighs> right? Like, let it go. And when we're tense, we know. We clench our jaw. Tongue goes to the roof of the mouth. Feel it. Feel it in your own mouth right now. Is your tongue relaxed? 
uh, every time I do this tongue meditation, I start yawning, it releases. It's really good stuff. And I hope that, like, what, what my teacher said in this class was, like, maybe you get a taste of the muck home, that's the container. That beautiful feeling of containment, of abiding, of being, beholding, right? And I'm going to end with a prayer. Because I need help and I surrender to the force to become one with me, the force of goodwill that wants to be present, that wants to abide, that trusts everything, that is in relief already, that knows the bliss of just being. So living deeply. So my prayer is for me and anyone watching, please help me belong. Please help me be one with the space. Please help me balance in and out what I am a place for and what my life and, and what my place to be put in this life is. To be put in my place. Wishing you uh, consciousness in, in how you abide so that you could create an abode that you dwell in, that you create to dwell in and um, co-creating and that this consciousness of what the self carries is what what is carrying the self so where is your mind dwelling where's your body dwelling where are you dwelling in your body and your mind thank you for spending this time with me be well